Broadcasting Scotland this morning. I'm Michelle Roger. We're in the office of Paisley MSP George Adam. George, thank you for agreeing to talk to us this morning. Thank you, We're Michelle. going to talk about lots of things, mm -hmm. education, uh, Paisley, your beloved St Mirren. Um, but first of all, can we take it back a little bit? Um, you've been MSP here since 2011, wow. um, Renfrew Council before that. Wow. What was it that brought you into politics in the first place? Basically, Thatcherism. Uh, I'm a child of the 80s and uh, when I was a teenager it was a natural thing, we were the last generation of joiners, you know, mm -hmm. we joined the Cubs, we joined the BB, we joined the Scouts, you know, the yeah. we ended up uh, joining a political party just seemed like a normal thing uh, to do and it was mainly because of uh, their anti-nuclear stance, uh, anti-Thatcher stance, because I could see what was happening and uh, eventually as time went on, we, our family used to discuss politics quite regularly, but as time went on, I could see that independence was the only way forward for my community here in Paisley and uh, also for Scotland. And that was my main reason for getting involved in the SNP. So my plan was to get uh, elected at 21, but bearing that mind at that time, no matter how ambitious I was, there only was the Westminster Parliament and council was your only option. But at that time, you'd have to wait till you were actually 21 to even stand for the local authority. Okay. So the, at 38, I finally get elected to <laughs> the Emshire Council. Is about you. <laughs> well, it's funny how things work out because I found that it was probably better for me. I preferred the person that I was mm -hmm. being elected as a 38-year-old as opposed to my angry young 21-year-old mm -hmm. that I was forced in the heat of the Thatcher battles. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I was quite happy. Uh, I wouldn't. There was times during my life that I wish it happened sooner. Yeah when I was going living through it, but uh, I did a lot of jobs that I had to do in the real world and I think that's helped mm -hmm. make me the person I am. So I'm more comfortable in my skin uh, when I was elected mm -hmm. and I think it was uh, it worked out for the best. I always tell kids that when they come to the parliament. I said, I don't want to sound like uh, someone preaching you, like Superman, Clark Kent <laughs> type uh, character, uh, but don't do drugs kids. <laughs> but then I also end up saying things like, uh, you know, if you work hard, it will actually happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, they always look at you as if, you're, aye, very good. You know, but it's true. Yeah. You know, it's it's not rocket science. If you do put the work in, it will happen. And uh, I, I've been lucky enough to represent the town that I was educated, born in as well. You know. So, what did you campaign on when you were standing for Parliament in twenty eleven? Basically, Paisley, uh, building on the work that the SNP administration had already done uh, during their time, because uh, we've been in since two thousand seven when I was a Ramshire councillor. But because uh, we changed quite a lot, there was uh, a lot of the the, the events. Uh, that were happening in Paisley, it all happened during our watch when we were there, you know, bringing the fireworks night away from Seat Hill playing fields mm -hmm. into the centre of town and creating footfall and creating these mm -hmm. events and showing that we could generate crowds of 20, 30, sometimes even 40,000 people just to see an X Factor uh, mm -hmm. runner up uh, put on the Christmas lights, you know, so the, all these things are quite good and uh, we'd had various local events, so it was mainly on regenerate Paisley Town Centre because we do have the challenges that other towns have mm -hmm. but you know everybody talks about it as if it's worse here it's not it's the same challenges we just need to get the sleeves up and actually get the job done now during our time in administration we did that we actually we were working in extreme dif uh, financial difficulties in fact the current Labour administration have got uh, they're, they're having it easy compared to uh, what we did at our time. But we still managed to have these ambitions for the town. And I think that's something that's lacking with the administration in Renfrewshire Council mm -hmm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. They don't have the ambition that I have for Paisley sure. and everybody else in Paisley has. They just don't have, yes, they're going for the city of culture uh, idea, mm -hmm. but it's like a kind of, it's, it's not been thought out to the extent it should have been. You know, they haven't even approached me as a local elected member mm -hmm. to actually say how are you going to help us with this. Now I'm their conduit to talk to the culture mm -hmm. secretary. Mm -hmm. So you know, come on guys, let's talk. Forget about the bowling club politics and let's try and do something for the town. Sure. So aside from sort of town centre and regeneration, what were the issues in Paisley that needed addressed back in 2010-2011? Basically a lot of the issues, uh, there was a lot of bread and butter stuff. You know, it was real kind of, because I was coming from the local uh, government background, it went from car parking at the RAH and surrounding mm -hmm. area, the hospital, uh, to actually uh, dealing with uh, regeneration jobs. Job solves are a mm -hmm. major issue mm -hmm. as well, because uh, Paisley, it's uh, where do we go, where do we make sure? I said that I became interested in politics because of Thatcher era. I've, there's a whole generation of young people mm -hmm. who I know ages with myself, who uh, David, who works with me as well, we know friends from school 
who have just given up life yeah. and have become shadows of the people we knew when we were teenagers and that's because of what happened in Thatcher's era and one of the things that we've done and one of the things I've worked with in the Scottish Government is to ensure that young people get that opportunity and we don't end up in a situation where they're just left in the scrap people and they're an acceptable mm -hmm. uh, kind of way to keep the economy uh, going well for the South East of England. Sure. You know, to me people are more important, you know, it amazes me the amount of politicians that can't work with people. Mm -hmm. You know, people say, oh, that's mad, of course, they c it must be, be part of the job. But there's a lot of politicians that actually mm -hmm. don't like the public and just are cynical. It's all about yeah. being in the chamber. And for me, the, the chamber's fun, it's good, but it's not the real world. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's Westminster or whether it's Holyrood, that's not the real world. This is the real world. Yeah. Sitting here in your constituency office and dealing with people's problems, that's the real world and that's what makes a difference. So talking about the challenges then, are they the same now? Are there different challenges now? What more needs to be done there and who needs to be doing it? There's still the same challenges. There's still the same challenges there. Uh, there's still uh, Things are looking better in Paisley High Street. But bear in mind, I've spent the past four years, everybody in the Parliament laughs because they, they, they actually play Paisley Bingo in my speeches <laughs> uh, to find out when I'm going to mention the great historic town of Paisley. <laughs> but I, I tend to do it because uh, if I can't talk up my town, who else is? Who's going to invest in my town and my people if I don't actually do the positive? Yep. Now, previous, forget party colour, previous politicians in Paisley have just gone down the cynical, you know, pe things are so difficult in Paisley. Yes, they are. We do have these challenges. Mm -hmm. But the way to look at it is how do we sort it? Yep. How do we do it? Now, me, I would say, is in the positive angle, there is a lot of community groups, there is a lot of people doing a lot of great work in Paisley. So promote that and tell people just the type of community mm -hmm. we have here mm -hmm. and how we want to make a difference in this mm -hmm. town. Mm -hmm. Now, these issues are still there. We still have issues with uh, uh, the, the high street. Uh, the problem we have is there's something like 90 different landlords between the Cross and New Street, really? you know, and that's one of the biggest problems because some of them are absentee landlords and organisations that are still getting paid mm -hmm. for businesses that went out of business about a decade ago, you know, we'll still get issues with that. The problem is when I got this office, my whole idea was to be accessible, have a shop front, get people here. I couldn't get, there's empty shops everywhere in Paisley, but I could not get a shop, you know, and that's the bizarre thing that the public don't know because mm -hmm. they wonder why these two light sides are there. So I would say the council needs to do something about yeah. that. For me, one of the ideas I keep pushing Renfrewshire Council is why are we not pushing Paisley as an outlet centre? Why are we not? Because our geography, if Gretna can do it in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> our geography with being in Glasgow's doorstep and being uh, the, being able to get public transport backwards and forwards, we could use our geography to our advantage. Now they say there's no capacity for it because retailers want a specific type of unit. Well, why don't they find ways to make that mm -hmm. fit? You know, that's what I'm saying with the local authority. Why don't we all talk and do this? I was at an event last week with UWS and I was speaking in that. I said, you know, this is our town. We're the ones that can make the difference. Mm -hmm. I'm your elected representative. What do you want me to do? How do you want me to do it? And let's let's get the ideas moving. Mm -hmm. let's, it's very much like, uh, it's probably, I'm coming to politics later on in my, well, okay, middle age. Uh, but as opposed to someone younger being involved in politics, I've already lived through and worked in the private sector. So it's kind of bringing a private sector ideal of how do we solve this problem yeah. and actually getting it in the public sector and getting everyone together to actually deal with it instead of moaning. Because you end up mm -hmm. everybody just sitting there saying, oh, it's terrible, what are we going to do about it? And that's not the attitude you need. You mm -hmm. need to actually just get the sleeves up and get the job done. Yeah. Out with the constituency, I mean, in Holyrood, you're actively involved in issues such as multiple sclerosis, adult learning, mm -hmm. carers, epilepsy. What is it about these issues that, that resonate with you and, and, and drive you to, to work on it's them? It's back to people again. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about making sure you can make their life better. And I know it sounds old fashioned and, and uh, uh, twee almost for a politician to say that, but I'm here to try and make a difference in people's lives. And uh, that MS in particular is because my wife Stacey has multiple sclerosis and that's very close to my heart. Mm -hmm. So we always get involved in MS and we've really pushed that to a stage that people, I never knew when I first met Stacey that multiple sclerosis, there's three types of MS. Mm -hmm. I only knew, I think it was Ollie and Stuart Henry, Stuart Henry had it, a Radio 1 DJ in the 80s. Uh, funny how everyone keeps coming back to the 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, but he had uh, progressive MS and he died. I thought everybody got to that stage. Yeah. But it's there's three, there's progressive, secondary progressive, uh, which Stacey now has, and relapsing remitting MS. 
uh, I always made the joke that when Stacey two weeks after we get married, she turned round and she said, oh, I've got double vision, I've seen two of you. And I went, life just gets better for you, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but it's, uh, she, but these are the kind of things Stacey's got steadily worse. So now that Stacey works with me as a volunteer at Parliament, because mm-hmm. the first two years I was going back forward, then I became PLO for education, became quite busy. You know, so and then you had the three days of Parliament mm-hmm. as opposed to just the uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So it got to the stage we weren't seeing each other. So now I get her to work for me for nothing. Great. You know, so <laughs> it's uh, so the two of us actually find out we work very well together, and they uh, were there and we're constantly campaigning for MS in particular because when people see what it's like with Stacey just getting mm-hmm. about, she goes about an electric buggy in the Parliament, so they get to see yeah. what how Stacey deals with that in a working environment. And it's not just a case of, oh, she's got MS, she can't work. Yes, she's got MS. She may have difficulty. She mm-hmm. may actually, but you adapt to actually the, employ them and, yep. and make sure that people can do it. But being and more inclusive. Well, we've sure seen, we'll seen some yeah. more people actually with MS be employed in the mm-hmm. parliament because I've seen Stacey be able to. You know, chronic fatigue is one of the problems, but yeah. you can work around that as yeah. well. You know, there's, there's a quiet area in the parliament you can go away. It's normally used by uh, members of the parliament or staff who are pregnant but mm-hmm. you can go to that quiet area and uh, just chill out for a wee while you know so there's ways you can work around yeah. these things and I think that's the important things what these things mean for me carers becomes because if it wasn't for my mother and father-in-law I wouldn't actually be able to do the job I do because mm-hmm. they help me when Stacey has difficulty sure. you know they're our backup there as well so I understand carers issues you know and just about any other uh, epilepsy again it's a personal thing because my, my niece has epilepsy so you, you tend to you know you tend to be drawn to every yeah. it's nothing unusual. Most families have these things uh, or or equivalents. Mm-hmm. So you tend to be drawn to these things as well. Like Christina McKelvey, because of uh, a, a family member with MND, she's involved with mm-hmm. uh, motor neuron disease, quite close to because uh, of neurological conditions sure. to MS. But you know you end up involved and in, when I when I used to run the ten K, I've not done that for a wee while. Well. <laughs> I blame the job. Uh, but uh, when I uh, did the 10 capes for MS or MNT, all these kind of yeah. causes that were close, breast cancer, because my mother had breast cancer as well. So all these things that were very close to you, you know, and it's, uh, it's funny. The Chamber, when you're talking about these issues, uh, I was talking to Patricia Ferguson, one of the Labour members, and she says, don't you find that the Chamber and the Parliament is a, it just sucks the emotion out of you when it's something like that? Uh, was something that really means something mm-hmm. to you and it does the number of times I've nearly found myself just breaking down yeah. and you're like and you, you end up finishing with thank you presiding officer you've still got a whole stand to say <laughs> you're going I'm not going to start bubbling in the middle of a speech in the parliament but it tends to kind of really get you that mm-hmm. way now maybe that's the way I am but I couldn't be any other way no. because uh, I've got to do what I believe in and if I don't believe in it then people will see yeah. and uh, when I used to work in the real world as in corporate sales it was me and the companies hated that because they wanted to sell the brand and the mm-hmm. individual, but it was basically people were buying from me, very mm-hmm. old fashioned, but uh, it was, uh, I couldn't do it any other way. You know, give me the, the uh, good ideas of this product and I'll tell you, but mm-hmm. I'll tell you why George is the best person to do the job yeah. for you, you know, and yeah. that tends to be the way I do things. And if I've got my heart in my sleeve, fair enough, you know, but I'd rather be that way. Yeah. You mentioned being education and being the PLO uh-huh. parliamentary liaison officer education I know that today there's teachers in Paisley can't believe that's happening <laughs> you know they've retired and they're going how did that boy end up in education <laughs> well, Nicola Sturgeon's making a speech today about education and mm-hmm. um, she's talking about the successes that the, the Scottish government's had so far uh-huh. um, and also about plans for the future focusing on making sure that every child has mm. an equal chance an equal start in life what can you tell us about the successes and plans for the future? Well success is right from the start is the fact that we've got free education, you mm-hmm. know the opportunity that anyone could can go to higher education and it's uh, something that Alex Hammond was very big on in his time as First Minister was the fact that uh, the rocks were melt with the sun before uh, this mm-hmm. administration and he's right yeah. because I went down to a conference down it was uh, the college uh, union, colleges union and uh, they uh, I was down there st- instead of Angela, down to London for their national conference and they were going on about how the Scottish Government, it's all about priorities and how the Scottish Government had actually done it. Mm-hmm. Now it was great to go down to a U- trade union group down in London who were, had Scottish members but they were telling us the great work we were mm-hmm. doing and they were talking about us 
the Scottish Government as best practice mm -hmm. and how the rest of the UK should look at that, which was nice to hear because when you're up here, yeah. you tend to get the negatives about what's uh, going mm -hmm. on, you know, how difficult things are, and, uh, but it was really good to go down there and I enjoyed that. But uh, one of the things is, uh, when you talk about successes, is the fact that we've had the hires results recently uh, the, and mm -hmm. uh, they've been fantastic. You know, that's the curriculum for excellence in its second year now. The first year for hires was this year as well. Now all the uh, profits of doom and gloom, uh, i.e. labour, have actually said it was going to be a disaster and it wasn't. You know, it's come, it's actually uh, worked out and now we've got more young people going towards uh, higher education and they've still got the opportunity for 16, 17 year olds to get the right to get a modern apprenticeship or a mm. college place. Now, th that's all good things because it goes back to what I was saying about the lost generation in the 1980s. Mm. We can't allow that to happen again. So even during these challenging times, we're actually doing that. You know, we've managed to ensure that we've got mm -hmm. that for. And today's announcement was in back of the hundred million pound attainment fund that uh, the first minister announced uh, the t beginning of this year. And effectively, that was over so many local authorities. Now they've included an extra fourteen local authorities that they're going to include in it. Some of them here in Ren well, some of the schools will be here in Renfrewshire. In fact, in Paisley, I think. Uh, the St Catharines and uh, St Fergus and Glencoats Primary are all schools that will be working with the attainment officer mm -hmm. to make sure that we can sort and move things forward. Now that's good because that all goes back on the back of the announcement the other day of the Read, Write and Count uh, campaign, which was effectively one of the things we were finding out in the Education Committee, where as we talk about attainment, investigate it, is that more and more uh, parents are the issue because they've got hang-ups about school. Mm -hmm. So if you're talking about attainment, you've got to bring the parents with you yeah. as well. So one of the positives is about this campaign is they're going to actually work with the parents to make sure that they're comfortable with the mm -hmm. school, comfortable with the teachers, and can be part of the child's education. Because we all know as parents that we are the main ones that are going mm -hmm. to be, the, that our, ch our children are going to look up to. And if there's a difficult difficulty, whether it be money or financial or uh, any other problems in the family, you know, we need to give these people support as well so that they get that opportunity to be the parent that their child needs. Uh, and growing up, and I think th these are all part of the successes of the government being focused on actually making sure that our children do get that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Personally, I'd like to take it to the next level because I've already managed to see that sport and culture are always a great way of getting into mm -hmm. education. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not rocket science, BBs, uh, Cubs, yeah. Scouts, Brownies. Schools did it in years gone by, the school play, whatever. You know, the, there's a way that we can use that to try and get there. You know, St Murn currently do uh, street stuff all over Renfrewshire where they've gone into areas, but our administration and the council started it, and they've managed to stop uh, youth disorder by some areas 26% mm -hmm. in uh, Paisley. Now, they've, they've, they've got credibility because mm -hmm. they've got a St Murn tracksuit that's branded St Murn FC, and the young people want to talk to that person, as opposed to the person from the YMCA or the Kelps or the yeah. Scouts or Renfrewshire Council who have the same qualifications but uh, don't have the credibility. Yeah. Yeah. And it's using that credibility to actually get the parents, if it's using football, if it's using singing, uh, art, the culture, the arts as all, well, it's using that. I can see if we can get a project in a place like Paisley to actually take mm -hmm. that to the next level. For me, it'd be perfect to use uh, St Mum Football Club is a perfect hub in Fergusley Park, mm -hmm. sitting there if you could actually have the sports hub along with, uh, they make sure that these kids get access to that through football and then end up saying with UWS and West mm -hmm. College Scotland, well there is a place for you, you can mm -hmm. go to college, you can do this, you know just instead of saying well I come from a, a certain area, um, mm -hmm. you know a child isn't born believing that their postcode is an area of multiple deprivation. They're born like the rest of us. They have ambitions, dreams and desires to do something in their mm -hmm. life. So we need to make sure that we cut that bit in the middle yeah. and uh, we may keep them focused on what they can achieve as opposed to, no, no, I can't. Mm -hmm. My dad, born and bred in Ferguson Park, uh, they, my grandparents worked in the Ferguson cotton mill. They wouldn't have believed that I'd have been a member of parliament mm -hmm. for uh, Paisley let alone an SNP one, <laughs> you know, but uh, they, they would have been, they were traditional died in the world Labour voters who I don't think they ever changed because they died in the 70s, so they probably, my dad was always SNP, but he, they came from that type of background and my dad ended up with his own business, got a trade, mm -hmm. was in a modern secondary school, 
you know, when it was the old system, the 11 plus, mm -hmm. you failed at 11, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the, he ended up starting his own business employing 200 old people in Paisley. So that just shows you mm -hmm. that, you know, we need to find a way, and that was because of the support of his parents, so we need to make sure these parents get that opportunity yeah. to actually get that support, and that's what the First Minister's talking about when we're talking about the attainment fund. It's not just about the young person, it's about the whole family. Mm -hmm. You mentioned St Mirren there, uh -huh. and I know it's really close to your heart. Yep. You're chair of the St Mirren Independent Supporters Association. I am yeah? indeed. And I understand you're working with a local businessman and other people uh -huh. to try and buy the club. Can you tell me more about that and why it's important to you, but also why St Mirren is important to Paisley? Well, if you take a look around our office here, there's more pictures of St Mirren. It's <laughs> like a teenage boy's bedroom. <laughs> uh, all the pictures of the football team here, you know. It's, uh, but uh, it is very important to me because uh, my whole family uh, supported St Mirren. Uh, ironically, when my, my grand died, not long after my dad was born, and my grandpa went to live in Fergusley in Black Novo with the family, and it was very female dominated family. Paisley is that type of town <laughs> because the mill lasses mm -hmm. were the ones that earned the major wage. So the men we're just an afterthought. So all this kind of gender balance, uh, we were there 20, 30 years, we even more than that, you know. So, the, but it tended to be that he stayed there uh, lying in the couch, and uh, his uh, my dad's grandpa says, I'm taking the boy down to Ibrox. The football was the only time that my grandpa actually stood up for us. We know we're Paisley, we're St Mun supporters, and this is our town, and we are supporting the local team. And it's the only time he ever actually said, "No, you're not doing that." I'm glad he did. Yeah. You know, because I think it's uh, given me more joy and sadness than anything in my life. In fact, I remember when St Mun moved from Love Street. I, I, a bizarre thing to say to Stacey as we walked away, but I said, "You know, no matter what, I've been married twice." I says, I've had children. I says, and the one thing I could always guarantee you all these years was I could come here every second week and watch the mum. <laughs> I says, that says more about me than anything else. But it was a bizarre thing to think, but it did make me feel that mm -hmm. way. And it's, it's an emotional attachment. You know, I remember in 87 when we won the cup. I remember a couple of years ago when we won the League Cup. You know, the town was just electric. Mm -hmm. And I think St Mun is Paisley, and Paisley is St Mun, mm -hmm. because we are it's like a metaphor for the town we have successes mm -hmm. but it's not easy yeah. it doesn't come easy to us and we've got to struggle and fight and make sure we do it we're not the trendiest of football clubs mm -hmm. or towns but we we really mm -hmm. have to work hard to get there and I think that's why it's such a it's such an important part of the town I always like uh, the fact that there's two stories why they wear black and white strips is because there's two there's one the clonastic monks uh, wore uh, black and white robes in the abbey the one I prefer is the black and white cart flows through the centre of the town so effectively the mm -hmm. town is yeah. you know the, the strip comes from the river that flows through the town and gives the town life because if Mm -hmm. need to, no rivers, no town, you know, so the, it's one of these things that uh, I prefer that more romanticised mm -hmm. version of the story uh, because I think that's how important they are. And if the team does well, there's so much they can do in the community as yeah. well, but it's also if the team does well, just the feeling in the town mm -hmm. just can makes everybody proud. It happens everywhere else, yeah. but you know, we're the biggest town in Scotland and the biggest village in Scotland as well, so it kind of gives us uh, that wee bit of uh, a boost now and again. Geography doesn't help with Glasgow, I don't say. <laughs> so the plan to buy the club, what's uh, that about? Well, basically, the Smizer are a fan organisation who's very, they're a cooperative society. Their very idea is to eventually buy the club. They've been buying shares for so many years. Now, the club's been for sale now for about five or six years, really? and there's been no takers. There's been two or three people on the go. Uh, to be fair to the board, by the time they've done due diligence, every time there's been a few chances amongst mm -hmm. that and they haven't give, gone down the route of other clubs where just give it to whoever is making the offer and that's good because they've protected the legacy of the club. Uh, I can exclusively tell you that we had talks with uh, uh, Stuart Gilmer and some of the board members last week with initial talks to talk about how we're going to go forward and where we're at and where they're at isn't too far away, mm -hmm. so we, we could be looking, uh, we're still at a very, very early stage, but we could be looking at uh, going down that route is quite quickly. Now, one of the things that long term for me is, Gordon Scott is a businessman, he was a member of the board before, and he's a, a, he had a building firm, uh, a he's, he actually builds all over the world, but he's uh, he's got something on his heart as well, he wants to be the chairperson 
uh, during that uh, five to ten year period. But he doesn't want to be owner of a football club forever. He wants to do his bit because mm-hmm. he'll be putting in the bulk of the money and uh, Smyza will be raising the rest of it and we'll buy so many shares so that we can get the majority and uh, he can be chair. And then eventually the idea is for us, Smyza, to be able to take over the club and it'd be a community club. Mm-hmm. Now my my whole aspect would be then long term we could start to do football clubs need to be limited, private limited companies. In this day and age, I don't think so. They only did in the Victorian era because they became uh, professional mm-hmm. and uh, they had to generate money that way. But we're almost going back to the Corinthian past of mm-hmm. football where it's all about you know the community playing the sport and what they can give back. So I can see it can be connected to a lot of the things yeah, I've talked about yeah. earlier on as well. If we get so, so over that five, ten year period, we'd buy God now and uh, eventually we'd get to the stage where the, the fans would own the club and uh, we would get, we would obviously, by that time, we'd have obviously been able to train some of our mm-hmm. members to be able to be uh, board members and not just fans. Because yeah. yeah. the last thing you need is just being <laughs> a fan. I told yeah. Gordon uh, when there is, initially, there'll be one member of Smizer will be on the board and I said if you get any thoughts of me being on that board you can think again I've got a day job and I'm sticking to mm-hmm. that but I'll do everything I can as a chair to see this through because I think this is the way forward for football uh, in Scotland our national sport uh, needs to look at itself mm-hmm. I know the SPFL aren't too keen in fan ownership but I, I believe it's the only way forward I'm going to see the SFA later on today in Hamden to discuss how they can work with us in attainment and mm-hmm. education uh, and I think all of these things can be connected because I keep saying to when I'm out in Hamden, they've all got the pictures and all the boat, all this, the badges of all the clubs. And I says, every one of your football clubs is doing something in these communities. You need to tell the politicians mm-hmm. what you bring to mm-hmm. uh, to Scotland as a community. You need to tell them because uh, the only way we can inspire young every kid in the west of Scotland wants to be a rock star or wants to be a uh, footballer. Uh-huh. You know, uh, that's basically the way it's always been. And it's still the kind of uh, way people want to go. And that's why I say culture and the sport is a perfect way. Not just let's at Mum, we've got the best hockey team, field hockey team mm-hmm. in Scotland. 11 in a row championships for the senior team, Kelburn Hockey Club. It's not jolly hockey sticks, it's a proper Paisley team. Mm-hmm. It's a council team, as they, uh, <laughs> as they get called within hockey circles. <laughs> but they keep winning because, uh, and they keep doing it, but we don't have a water based pitch in Paisley. So why don't we find a way? to mm-hmm. use mum in that area where they are and try and get water based pitch so we can get kids playing hockey, other sports. Feeds in to the government's policy in health and it also it's not all about being champions yeah. but it's all about uh, making sure that you everybody gets the opportunity to be what they can be. Sure. And St Mum being based in Fergus is just you know yeah. that's the that's the place we should have a pilot for mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. Because uh, for too long we've actually sat there and said Oh well, areas that Fergus is a period area of multiple deprivation. Two streets are technically an area of multiple deprivation. You know, it has been since my dad was born there in the forties. So let's do something about it. Yeah. Now, if that means we can actually get, I uh, uh, use a sports club as a conduit for uh, young people to go into drama, act, anything. Then let's do it. Mm-hmm. Let's just actually do it. I remember talking to Rosanna Cunningham where she says, "Well, that'd be good in Perth." I went, "Listen, you've got one <laughs> difficult street. I've got quite a lot of challenges. Can we not have it in my bit first? Mm-hmm. You know." But these are the kinds of things we've got to look at. And I don't want to be. I've said in the education committee, I don't want to be talking about attainment in ten years' time, mm-hmm. fifteen years' time, and saying we've still got a problem in educational attainment. Mm-hmm. I want to actually say that we've actually addressed it in some shape or form. Mm-hmm. You know, so I've, I've kind of, you've asked me about some I've gone back on everything else yeah, again, yeah. but I do believe it's all connected. So just know? kind of wrapping it all up, then one final question. What, Looking to the future, what would you like to see happening in Paisley in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years? Well, next year getting re-elected, that'd be a good <laughs> start. Uh, uh, apart from that, I would like to see uh, Paisley get to a stage where you no longer have people just go, uh, you know, oh Paisley, oh just George, he's from Paisley, and stand back. You know, people tend to have that kind of attitude as if, yeah, you know, because we've had so long, we've had such a difficult, because it's dead easy for the press. Mm-hmm. Any negative stories, just got Paisley High Street, just film it, you know. They want to see two light signs, they've just got the High Street, and, and that, that doesn't help the situation. Mm-hmm. We've all got a responsibility to actually deal with it. That's what I said when I was at the UWS event, networking event last year, or last week. Exactly what I said was, mm-hmm. we have the responsibility, you're the business community, I'm the politician, 
well let's work together to ensure that we can let's stop moaning about it if the council isn't picking up the bins and things looking messy then make sure they do it mm -hmm. you know let's just get the job done you know and the problem is you end up with local authorities who end up playing politics and it's not even proper politics it's just bowling club pettiness yeah. you know and that's not disrespect to any bowling clubs but i just mean it's not a uh, take on as important like there's council officers who have gone to various organizations and paisley said don't work with george he's smp now i'm paisley's democratically elected mm -hmm. member of the scottish parliament i'm the only elected member who represents paisley in its entirety so i would say you know talk to me first so we can actually do it set a culture status totally supportive mm -hmm. but talk to me so that i can help yeah, yeah. and actually see what we can do don't just hold it in and just say oh it's like a child at school with a uh, homework not letting them to see it mm -hmm. you know let's actually share and see what's going on let's get beyond the pettiness and uh, do what we can for our town because uh, all, all that's going to happen is that everybody they're going to they're going to feel like the ballot box uh, themselves but in the future i would say in the next uh, five years i would hope paisley would be the the be more improvement. The high street I would like to see is going to, to the idea of being an outlet centre. I would like to be pushing towards that and really make sure that we can put Paisley back on the retail map mm -hmm. again. Yeah, pre heads and more doorstep, that's never going to change. So we we have to do mm -hmm. something different. Uh, I seem to be the only person that's shouting for that at the moment because uh, other people's uh, the capacity's not there. Uh, chamber of Commerce, everyone else. That's not what I want to hear from my Chamber of Commerce locally. I want a wee bit of dynamism. You know, the, but uh, we need to all work together to move before we get to that position. And then I would like to see Paisley in about 10 years that people would actually look at it and say, Paisley has got a lot to offer. Look at culturally, you know, Jerry mm -hmm. Rafferty, Paolo Natini, David Tennant, Gerard Butler. You know, this wee daft town has actually given the, uh, the arts an mm -hmm. awful lot of people, you know, to go out there and uh, show that we can actually do so. There must be something here that has that kind of ability to do that in the business world we've got it as well andrew neil in journalism as mm -hmm. well you know we've got people who have just gone out and uh, done their own thing and represented the town yet so why do we not talk about that more often why do we not talk about the positives mm -hmm. you know and for me i would like to see people to look at paisley i had one general manager when he used to work for audi and he was trying to get in my head as general managers do <laughs> and he went george i want to know if there's more to George Adam than just I'm George Adam, a nice big boy for Paisley, who is in the SNP and supports St Mun. And I went, Well, I had my wife and my kids and that's it. <laughs> that's nothing else. <laughs> you know, and that to me is the most important thing because we need to make sure that uh, we tell everybody exactly who we are as a community and that we're confident mm -hmm. to go out there in the world and say, you know, we've got a lot to offer. Now a lot of communities struggle because they, they end up feeling life just gives them an absolute done mm -hmm. so much that the communities end up withdrawing a wee bit i think we need to promote that more and to tell people exactly all the good things like mary had her opening speech in the uh, parliament where she absolutely nailed it uh, for with her speech but the other thing was she talked about a lot of the negatives as yeah. well you know the, and one of the things you say is with that there is the positive stuff that's happening there's community groups throughout the uh, town who are working very very hard to actually uh, try and make a difference. You know, and I, my whole idea is, is to try and get them away from these silos where they're all working on their own and get them all to have some mm -hmm. kind of strategy where we can actually use that love for our town where everybody can do it. You know, that picture there is a copy. Of Gary Byers, a local answer. Well, that's just the print. The actual original is in the, the parliament, in my office in the parliament, because mm -hmm. that's uh, the People's Republic of Paisley's uh, <laughs> uh, official embassy. Uh, but uh, the, the original's there. And Gary, uh, when he did that picture, it's lovely blue uh, kind of water, mm -hmm. and he says, and there's flowers and everything. I says, Gary, you've got the same picture. You see the same picture in your head as I do when I look at Paisley. Uh -huh. And it's true, because if you look at it from that angle, it would not look no, like that. No. But I think Gary's captured it, how I believe the town can be. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's uh, it's not idealised, it's just the hard work we need to do to get us to that stage. And bear in mind, we have an 850-year-old abbey, mm -hmm. complete. Mm -hmm. It's the only abbey from that clonastic dynasty that's still uh, actually the, in one piece. Even the, the abbey down in Cluny isn't in one piece. They've only got computer uh, renderings of what it was like. We've got the town hall there, we've got Coates Memorial, we've got so much yeah. that we can actually give. The, when people come in, years ago I went out with a German girl who was from Dortmund 
and she couldn't believe when I took her to Paisley and showed her <laughs> everything she went she, well, she came from Dortmund because it was all new buildings uh, for obvious reasons <laughs> uh, but uh, she said she couldn't believe it all this heritage mm-hmm. and everything that was there you know and uh, that's one of the things that we don't tell people enough what's here what we've given you know the one time I remember going up to the Mitchell Library uh, it was the Ottoman books about birds and uh, someone from Renfrewshire uh, Council was with me and they said uh, uh, Glasgow said this is our most expensive book we have it's an Ottoman book and they went like and they said and the uh, Venture Council went, went, oh, we've got two sets. And we don't show it because we, the, the, mu- uh, the museum isn't fit for purpose to be able to show that, mm-hmm. couldn't show it. You know, so there's all these things that we have that, uh, you know, if we had to, uh, during our time in the council, we talked about investing in the museum and uh, the town hall. We did invest in the town hall, but the whole idea was they, they bookend the high street. So if the council invested in these, then you might get some of the, the bit in the middle might mm-hmm. get more investment from everyone else as well you know and that for me is the important thing you know so my vision for Paisley is that I want people to actually take Paisley seriously to see that we are actually a town that can, can do and not a town that's sitting there and as everybody says staring at our navel and worrying about how bad everything is it's all about the future it's all about positivity George thank you very much thank really you that. thank you